Hello everyone, this is Darwell 20, and welcome to episode 45 of Darwell 20's Let's Play series, where today, time to make a nuclear reactor, and hopefully it doesn't blow up. Or maybe hopefully it does, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are hoping for. I bet some of you are hoping it blows up. But we're going to play with nuclear reactors, I'm going to give you guys a little tutorial on how they work. Just a little though, because I'm going to be honest with you, most of it is just my memory of how IC2 reactors mostly worked. But I will tell you that I checked out um, a couple, there's a few places you can still find sample builds of nuclear reactors online. And I found one that I think will be pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Um, it'll produce 420 EU per tick, which ain't bad. Um, you know, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. Uh, as you can see, I've also been kind of idling here based on the fact that I've got all this, um, all this stuff, all these lightning bolts, 400,000 ish, man, we got a lot actually. Uh, so the plan today is we're going to build a nuclear reactor and we're going to see all the components of it and how it works. So long story short, if we look at FTB reactor, there's a bunch of things that we can get. Um, there's coolant which will basically absorb heat and then eventually release heat. Um, there's uranium fuel rods, which will, number one, produce energy, and number two, produce heat. And they also have a lifespan, as you can see, about 20,000 seconds. Um, so that's how long the fuel will last until it runs out, okay? So long story short, the more energy we're producing, the more heat we're producing. If a reactor's heat level gets too high, it will explode in a big, nasty nuclear reaction. And it's a bad time. So we don't want that to happen. Dun, dun, dun. So what we're gonna do instead uh, is use some other components in our reactor to help cool things down. So you've got heat vents, which will cool themselves. You've got uh, advanced heat vents, which will cool themselves even faster. And you can see on the, on the tooltip here, it does like 12 heat per second is how much it cools itself. Okay, there's also reactor heat vents, which will cool itself and cool the reactor. So basically speaking is uranium fuel rods will build up heat in themselves in the reactor, I think. And then the reactor heat vents will cool the reactors. You can also get component heat vents, which will cool off components. And you can get overclocked heat vents, which cool themselves and the reactor by a lot. Okay, in addition to that, there's heat exchangers, which will transfer heat from adjacent components and try and keep them in balance, if I remember correctly. So the basic plan with uh, with, with these is um, it can heat transfer to the core or to adjacent components. So you can basically extract heat from the core and, and transfer them to adjacent components or vice versa. Um, and then finally, there's reactor plating, which adds to the maximum amount of heat that the reactor can have before it explodes. And there's a couple kinds. There's, there's the kind that reduces the amount of, or, or increases the amount of heat it can absorb, or it won't increase it as much, but it will, uh, reduce the explosion size. So that's pretty cool. And then there's neutron reflectors. If I remember correctly, what these do is they will basically cause uranium fuel rods to produce more energy and more heat if they're adjacent to them. So we're going to look at that in just the next few minutes and we're going to play with this a little bit and then we're going to build a nice stable reactor that should create a decent amount of power without exploding. Sound fun? Let's do the thing. All right, so as we noticed, there's a bunch of versions of stuff here, right? Uh, these are the main four that we're going to want to play with. Uh, those and obviously some, some, some nuclear stuff. So let me grab, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure how many I need because I have a screenshot of what I want to do here uh, somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quad uranium fuel rods. Now these are made with a new machine that we haven't quite looked at yet. <clears throat> Uh, but there's a canning machine over here somewhere. And that's going to take fluid cells of water and uranium dust and combine them into uranium cells. Uh, now, do we still have some overclockers handy? We do. Good, because I'm going to want those. Much better. So good. So good. Also, I should note that I updated to version 1.6.0 of the Darwell 20 pack. There's a new version of FTB Industrial Interruptions in there, and I think it fixes some of the bugs we saw last episode, so that's cool. Uh, in addition to that, um, what we're going to want is a handful of reactor platings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven reactor plating. 
and we'll see what happens when we run out of resources at some point. I'm sure I will. Uh, we're going to want some component heat vent, heat vents, I think. Component heat vents. Pretty sure that's right. And then one component heat exchanger. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I want one component heat exchanger. I'm going to want some component heat vents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven component heat exchangers. Maybe that's component heat vents. I think I might want one of these. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, so like ten more of these? I don't know, we'll see. Clearly we have a lot of crafting to do. So let me get it all done, and then we'll be right back. Yeah, lots of this happening. Oh my goodness, we're out of power. We're not out of power, we just don't have enough power. <laughs> for the extruder and the roller to do all their jobs. We should really amp this up. Would it be a terrible idea? What, how about I cancel all this? And I'm just gonna let you <clears throat> do your job, which is finishing up all these guys, the quad dudes. How did I do that? Oh. Um, and then maybe we at least get this up to MV, if not even HV. Battery box wouldn't be a terrible idea. If we want to do that, though, we're going to need transformers. Let me get... Either we want transformer upgrades to go in these things and let them all be MV, or we want two transformer upgrades in all these things to let them all be HV, or we want just a transformer itself. But I'm worried about the transformer itself because... I assume that means that we'll just run into the same problem we're having here, is that we can't get enough power through the lines to power all our machines at this faster rate. So what I'm thinking I do is just get it's a lot of transformer upgrades is the problem. Like if I want 10 of these, we're missing a bit of iron and stuff. And that would be enough for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is what we need. But we already have two, so technically we only need eight. And that's just missing some sand. We can go make that happen, right? Be right back. All right, so we got all this stuff made. Oh my goodness, it's stacks of four. Today I learned. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is put two in here, two in here, two in here, two in here, and then two in here, okay? And then what I'd like to do is remove all these. Let's go get the HV... Now, this is just a temporary, but what I want to do is borrow you for a minute. I'm going to... I'm just going to break you, because you have such a small amount. We're going to remove all these guys. And then we're going to want some HV cabling. Okay. And I'm not going to connect this guy up, right? What I'm going to do is put my HV battery box here, and this should be okay. No explosions. That's always a good sign. Um, so that's cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this guy up with batteries. Okay. And then I'm going to drain this guy out. Because remember, if we break these, at least up until, you know, recently, I don't know if this changed, but remember, if we break these battery boxes, they lose their internal storage. So we don't want to lose all this, all these lightning bolts. Right? There we go. Now we're cooking. Now we have lots of power. So now we take this away. We can put him back over here. That, my friends, is now our entire line is running on HP. Cool. And then let's get you back out. And that should be cool. 
Oh, that is the wrong flooring. That's not what we built our floor out of, is it? I'm only gonna let him come up to, oh, oh boy. How did that happen again? Oh my goodness. Silly travel anchor. That should be enough. And then I can access my battery box here if I wanna charge up batteries. Now that's my main battery box and that's kind of cool. All right. So now my machines have no problem in theory uh, running at that higher speed. So did we get all our quads? We did. And I'm pretty sure there's no like nuclear problem, right? Uh, like there's no, there's no, there's no armor kit with the exception of the quantum and the carbon stuff. So I don't think we have to worry about radiation. I'm pretty sure that's true. Hooray, I'm not dying. That's always a good sign. All right, so now that we got those set up, let's go and ask for more things again, right? Uh, so first off, I wouldn't mind a few more overclockers just because I like overclockers. That's gonna require some hefty investment. Of, I'm gonna have to mine, I can tell. I'm gonna have to go mine again. This is what I'm trying to avoid, but we'll get there. Uh, reactor plating, did we get all the reactor plating we want? No, we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll get that. And then you guys shouldn't have too much of a problem with power at this point, right? How cool is that? That is awesome. That is really awesome. And if I need to beg, borrow, and steal some overclockers, I can totally do that. And look, not, a, not even a little bit of a problem with power because we're shoving high voltage through these lines and the transformer upgrades make it so that they don't light on fire because they received high voltage. Cool? Cool, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, yeah, I think heat is the word I'm looking for. Eleven component heat vents, and that shouldn't be too bad. Look at how fast it's all running. I love it. And then we want one heat exchanger component heat exchanger. Ah, so much better. Yes, this was absolutely the right way to go. Okay, and then I need, the most thing I need is the overclocked heat vents. We're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 of these guys. That's probably, we don't have nearly enough. Okay, we're not bad, I just need more iron as usual. So, back in a minute after I go mining. All right, lots and lots and lots and lots of mining later. And I'm gonna put these guys in here first, though I do wanna leave one behind. I just want these processed first because I know that's what we need the most of. And now that I can hear everything running down there, um, I can drop off a bunch of junk. Beautiful. Loving it. All right, feeling pretty good. I just kicked off the craft for the 30 heat vents that we need. Well, 28. Uh, so that's on its way. We'll be done in a minute. Also, we're gonna need, looks like a healthy amount of enderium ingots. So that's getting processed over here. I wonder if there's like a, is there another form of enderium? Like why does this guy need enderium? Is there another way to get enderium via, oh, there is an enderium ingot from FTB industrial contraptions. Interesting, okay, that's cool. And it looks like uh, this guy down here needs a little power boost. We can hear that kicking on because all of our things are running. So we can hear the, the crystal generator kicking on. I wonder how much... Um... And you still got 80% of your power left, so we're in good shape there. Not bad at all. All right, I think we're about to wrap it up here. Boom, 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 boom. And then just rolling it down. Awesome. Done. Sweet. So let's go play with the nuclear reactor, shall we? Guess where we're going to do this at? Not in our base. Uh, we're going to do this 
a bit away <laughs> from anything that can cause any harm. So check it out. We placed down our nuclear reactor here, uh, and there's a big inventory full of spots to fill. Okay. Now, if we hit the question mark button here, it's going to analyze the inventory of the nuclear reactor uh, to determine how safe or unsafe it is. Okay. So well, that's nice because it used to be that you had no idea. Now there's a way in game to figure out, is this going to blow up? Uh, so if I place, for example, one uranium fuel rod in here, right? Remember, uranium fuel rods will produce uh, 96 heat units per second. Um, now, I don't see exactly how much heat unit is available here, but if you click the question mark, it's going to say this reactor will want, run for 105 seconds. It will explode with a 12 block radius, and the max energy generated will be 60 lightning bolts per tick, and a total amount of energy will be generated will be 6,300 lightning bolts. Um, long story short, this is not stable. It's bad, right? This thing's going to blow up in about a minute and a half, mm, a little bit more than that. Okay, so we don't want that. But if we wanted to see what would happen here and see the heat getting built up, all we have to do is hit the plus button or the, or the run button. And you'll see we're now producing 60 ener energy per tick. And we're also building up heat down here. Now, once this heat fills up all the way, that's when the explosion happens. So let's pause this dude and say, all right, we generated heat. Now, when he stopped, the heat's not dissipating because we don't have any heat vents or exchangers in there. Now, remember, um, component heat vents can cool off components. So I think if we put that in there, uh, basically nothing would happen, right? Notice, notice nothing is happening because I put a component heat vent in there, okay? Uh, the reactor plating, I think if we put a bunch of this in here, it would probably reduce. It looks like this is going down, right? Because we're increasing the maximum. So we basically made it so that this can have more heat in it before it explodes. But again, not something that we want. Um, what we want to do is be able to cool this thing off. So in order to put that, uh, make that happen, we need to put some overclocked heat vents in there. What these do is they will cool themselves at a rate of 20 per second, and they'll cool the reactor at a rate of 36 per second. And they have about a thousand coolant inside them. So what will happen is when I place this inside the reactor, it'll start drawing heat out of the reactor and it'll start cooling itself off, but it'll draw heat faster than it can cool itself. So if we watch what happens with the coolant tooltip here, we'll notice, um, or maybe it's not. It seems like it's self-cooling pretty fine. Interesting. All right, well, that's neat. Maybe because it's not actually running and it's just straight up cooling the reactor, that's all. But you can see it's, it's basically drawing out, what is that, 36? It looks like 36. Yeah, 36 per second. It seems like it's cooling itself just fine. I don't know if that's what's supposed to be happening, but meh. Long story short, it cooled off the reactor. Now, if we run this reactor, okay, remember we're producing 96 and we're cooling at 36, right? So if I put a few of these in here, see what happens? Now we're cooling more than we're producing. And you can see the heat is going down consecutively. And if we hit the question mark here, we'll see the reactor will not explode. Hooray, okay? So the, so the game that you get to play here is how do I position these things so that they're nice and easy and good, right? So now we could do this, and let's see what happens, right? Uh, that is a component heat exchanger, that heat transfer adjacent. This guy, component cooling, I don't know. So heat transfer to adjacent is 36 per second. Okay. I feel like these guys should be taking damage at some point, and they're not, and that's confusing me. But if we pause it, it'll immediately, the heat will start dropping because we have lots of overclocked heat vents in there. Um, so let's start building um, the, the reactor the way we want it to, right? So to get this built, what we're going to do is we're going to put our, our component and heat vents in here. So I'm pretty sure I want to do this and this and this. And I'm just following like a little diagram that I've got from an old IC2 reactor build. This, this, and that. So that's good so far. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's this guy, component heat exchanger. Then we wanna add our fuel rods. So this will be here, here, uh, here, I'm pretty sure this one, this one, and this one, okay? 
And then I'm going to add my plating. I'm just going to go here and here, here, there, there, here, and here. And then the rest of these guys become overclocked heat vents. Okay, so this is the design that I that I found online that somebody came up with. It should produce about 420 lightning bolts per tick, and it should be thermally stable. So if we hit the question mark here, that's what we get. 420 lightning bolts per tick. In total, it's going to produce 8.3 million, uh, and the reactor will run for 20,000 seconds. It will not explode. So that's pretty cool. And if we hit the button here, there we go. Now we see some overclocked heat vents. So basically, um, these guys are now taking damage. Their coolant is going down, but it's cooling fast enough that the coolant will not run out. Okay, so that is working correctly. Sweet. And I can pause it and everything, you know, stops being hot. So the plan is um, basically to probably at least have two of these running. Now, we don't want any explosions to happen, but in theory it shouldn't. So do I want to move this a little bit closer to here, or do I just want more cables? Because uh, I could, in theory, just make more HV cables. Get me a bunch of rubber, would you? Seems a little silly to have this so far away. So I'll probably move it a how far, how far exactly is this? In theory, this should be okay to do. Eh? Because you're an HV battery box. Yeah, look, a little bit of power maybe? And then if we kick you on... Oh, nope, you burnt up. Pause. This is a thing that happens. It's the worst. Um, that shouldn't happen, but it does. Um, pretty sure that's a bug. If I picked you up and brought you over here, you're going to overheat. But if I get the fuses... There we go. Now we're cool. And look, that bug is fixed. Sweet. So this is a bug currently. Uh, I reported it to the to the team working on this mod. Basically what happens is if there's a bunch of power already in the reactor and you connect cables to it, it tries to output more than 512 and then the HV cable burns up and that's bad times, right? So now we should be safe to turn this on and it won't overload because it's doing 420, okay? Um, and then you're getting a net gain of power. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought the quarry did max 512. Well, that's not bad, actually. Can I put more overclockers in you, then? Because that would be fun. More overclockers, please. That's actually not bad. I was under the impression that we were going to need 512 without overclockers, but it sounds like we're okay. Uh, and this thing should just run now. In theory. Right? Because he will not explode. Sweet. And you're just, I did make this overclocked down here, by the way, to a max, because, you know, as it was getting multiple resources, it was being a little bit slow. So there's your four overclockers. Can I put four more in there? Yes-ish. But the problem is, is we're definitely not producing enough power for that. What if I made you two more? One more? Uh... So, doable, but what we would need to do is we would need to do a transformer upgrade. Okay. And the transformer upgrade would need to support EV current. Or we could use it just a transformer, maybe. But yeah, that's that's basically what we would have to do. And we would need an EV battery box here. And we would need two reactors to keep this running if we wanted to overclock it further. But I mean, that's not bad. That's pretty quick. I mean, I've seen faster, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying. It's not bad. 
not bad at all. I wonder if uh, max in, max out. Max in is 2048, max out. So we would want an HV, right? Transformer between here and there to make sure that it would down convert from EV to HV. Well, what's 8192? Long story short, hey, we have a quarry running and it's running pretty quick and it should run infinitely. And that's pretty cool. Now the downside is I don't believe there's a way to turn off this reactor with redstone. Um, so there's no, um, you know, redstone control on these guys. Yeah, see, he's still running. If I paused him, right, he's not running. It doesn't do anything. Uh, I would I would personally like to see that as an option. Um, I'd also like to see a comparator output on this guy. So I could be like, hey, when this is full, stop the reactor. Because right now what's happening is we're just burning through this fuel. Now, to be fair, it's going to be a lot of power for not that much uranium, right? Uh, if I want seven more of these, we're talking 28 uranium ingots. That's it. And we have what I would call a healthy amount of uranium. So we're not hurting for uranium fuel rods. So I think we'll be fine. And realistically, all these other components will be fine. Now, were I to not have the proper amount of heat coverage in here, they would eventually get destroyed. So if you let the coolant run out, it will destroy the item. Because this is a properly balanced reactor, that won't happen. However, you know, if you build your reactor the wrong way, the heat vents, if they take too much heat, will eventually get destroyed. And then once they're destroyed, your internal heat will build up and then kabooms happen. And kabooms are bad. We don't want kabooms. I just found something cool. The actual bounding box of the ender chest changes when the chest opens. So watch what happens with my lasers. You ready? Haha, <laughs> that's cool. I'm actually very proud of myself that that did what it's doing. That's pretty awesome. That is super neat. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just having fun. I, it's cool though, right? It's cool. So if I wanted to make an HV transformer, is that like doable-ish? Seems like it. So that would input 2048, output 512. Well, technically, let me put this here. I don't even know if I need that. What I really want is an EV battery box. That's what I really want. How hard would that be to make? We need antimatter crystals. Okay. Well, that's probably not happening anytime soon. We're going to need some kind of antimatter maker. That is going to be antimatter constructor with a max input of 8192. Kind of curious. We're going to need another iridium circuit, which is another iridium alloy. So a lot of this is craftable remotely, which is, you know, awesome. But we could also pop home if we want to babysit it. But I'm kind of curious what antimatter is involved, you know, like what all what all goes into the making of antimatter. Uh, that's something we're going to have to figure out pretty much right now, because I would like I would like to get even more storage for this thing. The problem is, is we're about to fill this stupid thing up. Which is great. Don't get me wrong. I'm very thrilled. But also, like the like the min max are in me. Also, by the way, I should probably chunk load over here. Okay, so you're chunk loaded. You're chunk loaded, and now we're cool. Technically, we may only need these two chunks loaded, and technically, I could move this a little closer. So, but it said 12 radius of explosion. So I don't trust. I don't trust. FTV industrial contraptions to not explode when I'm not here. I don't trust it yet. Um, I'm just saying. So antimatter doohickey. Can I make my iridium alloy yet? Oh my goodness, what is taking so long, iridium? See, now we have to go home and babysit. I didn't want to babysit. Oh, you're doing that. Okay. Can you do this? Oh, yes, you can. Excellent. You have so much coal that you need to make. That's the problem. He'll get there. Man, that's awesome, though, that he can accept four more overclockers and not even break a sweat. We've got all the powers going on here. That's pretty cool. 
I have an EV battery, or no, I want the antimatter dude. We should be close to making our iridium alloy. Hmm, not that close. Now we're good. Now we're good. So that would be you. That would be another iridium circuit. Close. So close. Luckily you get two of these per, so that's kind of nice. That's what's running still. Okay, not a big deal. Just a few more seconds. Urge to tick accelerate is rising, but I'm holding off. I'm trying to behave myself. All right, now we've got our antimatter maker. So I'm kind of curious how this works. I have no idea. I assume it needs a stupid amount of power. Is that a fair assumption? I wonder if there's power loss on these lines like there was in IC2. I don't know. Antimatter constructor. All right, so he's got power. So that's cool. I'm assuming scrap plays a role. So where do I get scrap from? Reprocessing. Any item goes in and scrap comes out. And we'll need a reprocessor. Add this to the to-do list. So you're going to want a composter. And you're going to want a compressor. Seems fair enough. Now we should acknowledge that this guy has a max input of 128. So if we want him to run on a 512 line, we need to give him a transformer. So let's not forget that component of things. Should be quick enough. There we go. Did I throw the transformer in here? Yeah, he technically shouldn't need a transformer if I play my cards right. So what I'm gonna do is I want to place this guy here, so let's break this. Let's put our reprocessor here. I'm going to put my transformer in first, and then you should have no problem accepting HV current. And then I put, quote, any item in. So that includes things like cobblestone and sticks. Boy, you are not fast. Look how not fast you are. Look at how hilariously unfast you are. Oh my goodness, that's not fast. That's too fast. <laughs> Can I do this? That's not bad. That seems to be breaking even. How about one more? Eh, not a little, that's a little bit too much to ask for. You're probably suffering now, but that's okay. I want to burn this power. I don't want this power net gaining because that would be a waste of uranium right and then you're going to get a bunch of stuff now presumably the scrap helps with antimatter but i don't know in what way so first off i want to see what happens when this fills up completely because in theory the way it used to work is you could dump a bunch of power and it'll produce uu matter back in ic2 days and scrap would make uu matter cheaper from a power perspective i don't know how it works now we're going to figure it out um, one way or another. But I have ideas on how to make this, you know, cooler. And scrap, there's only a chance that it will produce scrap per item. Um, you know, there's, there's burnt cables will also turn into scrap, by the way. We should just make a cable burner. I bet, I bet burning cables is a more efficient way of doing this than burning... <laughs> We could just make a machine that keeps placing cables in front of machines that can't accept it and eating the burnt cable. I mean, realistically, we're just talking about slime balls and copper, right? And we have, like, a stupid amount of copper? I'm pretty sure we're voiding copper at this point, or at least we were. So, so let's see what happens when you fill up with your million, which will be about a minute. Close enough to start recording, and one million. Oh, yep, so there we go. It created a piece of antimatter. That's what I would have expected. Now with scrap in there, it looks like it's 
boosting it to a degree. Okay. So it's doing something with scrap living in there. I can't tell quite how much it's boosting. What if I disconnected you for a sec? 464. It turns it orange. I don't know what that does. In theory, it should mean that it needs less power. It definitely feels like it's moving faster when it's got scrap, right? So that's neat. So what we could do is place our reprocessor here, get ourselves a node, and then we do you and you. And then reconnect this. Now you're running again. And what I would like is a chest here. And then I would like you to... How am I on cards? Pretty good. Extract on orange. Insert on orange. Extract on magenta. Insert on magenta. So in theory, I put cobblestone in here, and it should go into there, and any scrap that gets produced will make its way into here. Yes? How cool is that? That works for me, right? So he'll just add scrap as it gets produced. When and if. Oh, there's the scrap. So did I do something? Oh, I forgot to set it to extract. Yeah, now he'll do the scrap and he'll go in there, and that's what's up. Eh? That's cool. That's cool. And if I wanted to, what I could do is I could make... I could make this extract and go into here and blacklist antimatter, because we don't want antimatter to get scrapped. That would be a bad time, right? Yeah, no, we wouldn't want that to happen. But I think I'm just going to be extra safe and not even do that. I think what I'll do is just, you know call it here. So let's wrap up the episode. We'll come back next time. I'm just going to put a bunch of cobble in here. And then, by the way, there's nothing preventing me from making a cobblestone generator or something else to just constantly feed this thing scrap, right? Um, but this will make the antimatter that we need, which is going to be used for some of the more advanced stuff, including antimatter crystals, the EV whatevers, and all kinds of other things. But... For now, it's wrapping up point. So Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time to, uh, you know, stuff and things. Uh, what I think I'd like to do is turn this into an EV battery box. Maybe make a second nuclear reactor. Did you burn up? How did you burn up? You're killing me, Smalls. How did you burn up? You know what I bet happened? I bet, I bet the HV battery box filled up. And when it did, this thing back stuffed power. And then... Yeah, that's horrible. I hate that. I hate everything about it. Um, what I'm going to need... I bet if I did this and I paused you... This is your workaround. Just do that until it's clear. And then we can put our cables back. And then resume. And now he's running again. Now he's not burnt up. And he's going to net gain power. But what's going to happen is if this fills up, it's going to blow up that cable again. So I'm going to I'm going to ask them to fix that one as a priority because that's that's going to be a problem. Not a big deal, but we'll figure it out. For now, Dell Twice signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.